This PowerPoint is about the characteristics of life, things that make all living things living. What exactly is life? What do things have to have in order to be considered living? For example, are these things living? How about this one? What makes something living? Often you hear the word organic, which sometimes means, especially today, means raised or grown without pesticides or chemicals. Or if you're more familiar with the science definition, something organic means containing carbon. But primarily it means something that is living or was once living. So what are those characteristics of life? There are six that all living things must exhibit in combination. The first characteristic is that all living things are made of cells. When in doubt about whether something is living or non-living, come back to this characteristic. Is it made of cells? In the picture you see um, a typical animal cell with all of its parts labeled. If an organism is only made of one cell, it's called unicellular, that's this term here, and if it's made of more than one cell, it's called multicellular. The second characteristic is that all living things are organized from a molecular level up to the whole organism. This organization contributes to the function of the organism. For example, just one part of an organism is the stomach, and that stomach is made of atoms. Those atoms get combined to become compounds. Those compounds combine to make cellular organs, so organs inside each individual cell. Those organs combine to become cell tissues, and then those tissues combine to become the organ itself. Without all of those levels of organization, the stomach does not do what it's supposed to do. If you start at the bottom of the screen, the most basic thing that everything is made of are atoms. This includes non-living things as well as living things. Everything is made of atoms. Those atoms combine to make molecules. So you have a molecule of water, or you have a molecule of oxygen. Now once you get into the living things, those molecules combine to form organelles. Organelles are, are basically the organs inside the cells, the parts of a cell. Then you have those organelles combining to make a cell. Cells that have the same job combine to make tissue, like skin tissue, muscle tissue. Then it, you can have a number of those tissues combining to do a different job, which becomes an organ your heart, your lungs, your liver, your brain, your skin, those are all organs. Those organs combine to become an organ system. For example, your heart, lungs, blood vessels, and the blood that they carry is the cardiovascular system. And lastly, you have the multicellular organism. Every level of organization, organization has emergent properties, meaning that that level can do things that the previous level could not do. For example, if you look here, if you start with one endothelial cell inside the body, if you combine those cells together, you have a sheet of endothelial cells. And then if those sheets wrap around and become a tube, you end up with a capillary. Your capillary carries blood and allows oxygen molecules to get to all the parts of the body. But one endothelial cell could not carry blood all, all on its own. It has to be combined with other cells. These levels of organization carry on into even larger things. For example, if you look at this, um, this level of organization here, you have an organ system. These are organs that are physically or chemically together. These are part of this flower. This flower 
is the multicellular organism. It's one living individual. But if you put a group of those same flowers together in the same area, it's called a population. Of course, you know those flowers aren't the only thing living in an area. So all of the populations living in the same area becomes a community. All of the communities in a particular area become the ecosystem. The ecosystem is also combined with the non-living environment like soil, rocks, water, air, plus the community of living things. And then all of the ecosystems put together on the planet become the biosphere. This is any place where life is possible. The third characteristic of living things is that all living things use energy. This is typically called metabolism. People take in, they get their energy from food sources and once it's digested it's changed to heat and mechanical energy so it allows you to move. Mechanical energy would be anything that's allowing you to move as well as make decisions and electrical energy inside your body. Uh, plants, on the other hand, take their energy from the sun. They use light energy and they change it to the chemical energy. That chemical energy is then used by other living things. Energy is connected. The flow of energy goes from the non-living environment to the living environment and then back. Everything starts with sunlight and or inorganic chemicals. Those producers, these would be the plants, use that energy from the non-living environment to produce the sugars. Then those sugars, the energy found in those sugars, go to the consumers. In addition, some of the energy made by the plants is lost back to the ecosystem, usually as heat. Consumers then take that energy from the plants or the producers and use that for their own purposes. Once both producers and consumers die, the decomposers use the energy uh, for their own purposes and also take the organic material that was once the consumer or the producer and turn it back into that inorganic chemicals. They ba basically break it all down until it's back into non-living environment. But then the producers take the non-living and turn it into uh, food sources for the living. Fourth characteristic of any living thing is that it maintains homeostasis. This means what an organism would do to maintain a stable internal environment. So, for example, if in spite of what the external environment is doing. So in humans, you have an internal body temperature that basically stays the same all the time. If it gets hot outside, then you sweat, which keeps your inside the same temperature. If it gets cold in the external environment, you shiver, which increases that internal temperature so that it doesn't match whatever's going on outside. Related to maintaining homeostasis is an organism's ability to respond. That can either be through irritability, which is an immediate response. For example, in this picture of the Venus flytrap, the insect trips a little uh, hair inside the flytrap and the flytrap immediately closes. Or adaptation. This is inherited behavior characteristics. So this happens over time and it better enables an organism to survive and reproduce. For example, this, this creature here has adapted to its environment, maintain, or giving it a great sense of camouflage, which allows it to better survive. Adaptation over time is termed natural selection. Fifth characteristic of any living organism is that it uh, is growth and development. All living things undergo stages of growth and development and those stages are determined by their DNA. Growth occurs because cells divide. So when you were an infant, you were very small, and now you are much larger because the cells inside your body have divided over and over and over and over and over again. Development is slightly different. This is when a certain cell takes on a specific job, like the job of the cells inside your eye is much different than the job inside the cells, inside, or job that the cells do inside your heart. 
The sixth and final characteristic of all living things is that they have the ability to reproduce, either asexually or sexually. Asexual reproduction is just basic fission. The one cell, cell, the genetic material inside one cell will copy itself and then the cell will split into two. In sexual reproduction, you have two parents and this allows for genetically diverse offspring meaning the offspring from two parents are not, aren't all exactly the same. But in asexual reproduction, the offspring are exactly the same as the parent. In order to be considered living, the organism must possess all six characteristics, not just some of them. So let's review all of those. Number one, the most basic, the organism is made of cells, either one or many. Two, it shows levels of organization. Three, it uses energy. Four, it can maintain homeostasis. Five, it can grow and develop. And six, it can reproduce. So here's an example, the example of a computer. Characteristics a computer has would be organization. It's made of circuits and parts and fans and motors. It can use energy. It has to be plugged in in order to run properly and it maintains homeostasis. If the inside of a computer gets too warm, the fan turns on and cools it down. But the characteristics it does not have are cells. It cannot grow and develop, and it cannot reproduce. So a short quiz. These questions, I believe, are found on your assignment. Make sure you answer them there. Number one, what, what is an example of homeostasis? You can go back in the movie to find one if you need to. Number two, why is energy required by living things? Number three, is a computer living? Explain why or why not. You need to use those example uh, of the characteristics that it does and does not have in your answer. And number four, is, a, is fire living? Again, go back to those six characteristics. Determine what fire has, what fire doesn't have. 